Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Samuel Brown, aka RBT, coming at you with another episode of Money Manziel today. And I want to start off by saying this episode is going to be a little bit different, or actually a lot different, or I guess completely different in terms of commentary because technology absolutely hates me. The other day when I was editing the last past and present squad builder, in the very middle of it, my computer just randomly decides to restart and update to Windows 10, which I didn't want it to do. And after that, I hadn't recorded a video until this episode of Money Manziel. I recorded the episode, went to go back and edit it, and apparently it completely reset my audio settings to where the gameplay is like recorded at the same exact time as my sound, as my commentary, and you can't even hardly hear my commentary. So what I'm gonna have to do for this episode, and this episode only, is do a post commentary. I asked everybody on Twitter what I should do, and everybody just told me to do a post commentary, so hopefully it's not too bad. I'm not used to post commentaries, but hopefully you guys still do enjoy, and to make up for it, I wanna put a stipulation out there. If this episode of Money Manziel can hit a thousand likes by tonight, I will upload another episode of Money Manziel tomorrow. So if you want to see a normal episode with live commentary and everything, because that's what I enjoy doing, drop a like. And like I said, a thousand likes by tonight, and you'll see the next episode tomorrow. But with all that said, let's jump into the first game of this episode, and hopefully my post-commentary doesn't suck freaking pelican penis. Jumping into the first game of this episode, my opponent starts this game by handing the ball right up the gut or right up the nipple as you guys like to hear to Marshawn Lynch. Think that's Tony Romo at quarterback. He has a Cowboys uniform, so obviously a Cowboys fan. But he had a pretty good team. He gets a nice play here down to the 36-yard line. We have him to a third down and five, and somehow he makes that catch right there. That was Kevin Pierre-Lewis in coverage, the bronze that I love so much. It's really the first play in the series he's really not done well on the first bad plays have but there once again up the gut to Marshawn Lynch and he takes the seven nothing lead just like that and starting off this game we just start absolutely magnificent with a sack as you know that's how I like starting games but here next play screen pass to Darren McFadden to try to get some of those yards back and he picks up the first down and gets just absolutely obliterated but at least he hangs on to the ball Second down and six, we have Rob Gronkowski across the middle as we pick up a first down. First down and 10, gonna be looking for Rob Gronkowski again on the four verticals route, and he makes the catch. Thank God he's not dropping it like he usually does in the series, but first down and 10, we look for the bronze beast himself, Cameron Clear, and I honestly don't believe this guy's dropped a pass this whole entire series as a 49 overall receiver. And I think that was him again. I could be wrong. I could be. I think that might have been Michael Irvin. But anyways, first down and goal right here, trying to tie the game. And who else but Cameron Clear to make the touchdown reception as we tie things up 7-7. That actually gives Johnny Manziel two upgrades right there. On my opponent's next possession is a second down and four. He's looking for a receiver, and he finds my Marcus Gilchrist. He gets the interception, and my opponent's like, he's like, bye-bye, bye-bye. We get the win, and just like that, that's a rage quit. I don't know why he rage quit just like that. It was only 7-7, seven to seven, but he did quit, and to count these upgrades really quick, it was a touchdown, which is two upgrades from Johnny Manziel. The win is a third upgrade. The rage quit is a fourth upgrade, and we actually avoided relegation from that win, so we actually get five upgrades from this first game, which lasted like two seconds. And sadly enough, we're using all five upgrades at the right outside linebacker position, taking out Kevin Pierre-Lewis, who's been in the series for the whole entire duration, who's been phenomenal, but eventually we are gonna have to upgrade, using all five upgrades to go to a right outside linebacker that costs over 100,000 coins, and that is Sean Lee, 98 overall. Hopefully he's a huge upgrade. I know Kevin Pierre-Lewis, aside from that last game, was phenomenal, but I'm pretty sure a 98 overall should be a big upgrade. So with that said, guys, let's jump into the second game and see if we can continue this winning streak. Well, we already have a third down and 10, and we, we, that good start, really good start. And uh, let's just not talk about that. But on the ensuing punt, we get a big hit. We cause a fumble, but of course, of course, our player just, you know, kind of does a little front flip over the ball and doesn't pick up the ball. So we could have had a big turnover right there, but he's just going to hand the ball off to his very own Darren McFadden and just go up the nipple for a good chunk of yards to start off the game for him. And here on a second down and six, he's going to continue to pound the nipple with Darren McFadden and get another big chunk of yards. And at this point, I'm a little bit alarmed, but 
luckily we're now at his third down and eight and can potentially get a stop he has his quarterback Marcus Mariota finds a receiver good throw from him now he is in the red zone that's a pretty good team here I guess run up the middle I thought he's gonna run it with Darren McFadden but luckily we did get a stop before he does get into the end zone first and goal we guess run up the middle again and this time it works out as we stop Darren McFadden in the backfield now he has Marcus Mariota in the shotgun on the third down and goal and we get pressure that Sean Lee doesn't force the sack but he does fourth a fourth down, and of course my opponent is going for it right here. This would be an absolute huge stop if we could get the stop from the four-yard line. Marcus Mariota, he's scrambling, he's scrambling, he's scrambling. We cause a fumble, and we pick it up, but no, that's a safety. I'm just effing with you. I'm just effing with you. I thought at the time it was a safety, but we do get a touchback there. I was scared to death, honestly. Completely scared to death. But what a huge play right there. My reaction was crazy, too, but of course you can't see it. And there, Ryan Broyles with a huge catch because absolutely smackled off, but luckily hangs on to the ball, which normally isn't the case with my teams, but I digress. Third down and two right here. We find Ryan Broyles again, who's been really, really good in that slot receiver role, especially in this episode. Now a first down and 10, going to be looking for a vertical route right here, and that's going to be Rob Gronkowski, and he hangs on, which is not normal from him either, but my team's actually playing really well. Here we actually audible. No, no, we didn't. I didn't audible, but regardless, we're scrambling out with Johnny Manziel. We find a receiver open. That's Ryan Broyles again, and now we have the ball at the seven-yard line. Toss sweep here to Darren McFadden, and he does not get into the end zone, but it is close at the one-yard line. Second down and go up the nipple to Darren, and he gets stopped. So right here, I'm kind of scared, don't know what to do. I'm kind of thinking, should I pass the ball? Should I try running it again? And I decide to audible to a zone run right here inside zone to Darren McFadden and into the end zone as we take a 7 to nothing lead as we go on top. And that's one upgrade for the Darren McFadden touchdown run. Here we have a third down in inches. Well, actually, my opponent has a third down in inches. He throws the ball deep here to Calvin Johnson, and look at that. Calvin Johnson about caught the ball with his foot. Go back and replay that. He about caught it with his foot. But here, a fourth down and inches. Gets and run up the middle is so OP sometimes. But we do get the stop. Huge turnover. I wish you could saw my live reaction. But of course you can't because my technology is a pleb. And here, we get sacked. I was about to press right bumper. And it was a little bit too late. So here, with 20 seconds left. Third down in 22. I've got to stop running that route I cannot read it good at all that's what I was saying in the live commentary I just got to stop I thought he was going to be open and that was a a very bad pass from me but here on the crossing route he finds I think that's Calvin Johnson down to the 35 so he actually has something cooking right here after my turnover and here he throws the ball deep and I think that's uh yeah that's that's a touchdown that is a uh that's a touchdown which sucks which just sucks he, he shouldn't have scored that touchdown it's all my fault but here he has the game tied and up the nipple again. He loves pounding that nipple with Darren McFadden, but oh, I need to stop, boys. I need to stop. And this route right here, just a quick little out route to the running back, was killing me all game. I couldn't stop it for nothing. But here, a first down and 10, scrambling with the big boy Mariota. I left my zone there, which I shouldn't have done, and that left his receiver wide open for the first but here we have him at a third down and 12 this would be a big big stop and here a drop pick from drc but at least it is a fourth down and 12 thought he was going to go for it but he kicks the field goal as he takes the lead 10 to 7 but that's okay that's okay we can score not a bad defensive drive although you know how to took the interception but here first down and 10 trying some vertical routes and uh i shouldn't have done that I got sacked. His defensive line was actually completely manhandling my offensive line. As uh, two sacks in a row isn't, you know, necessarily how you want to start a drive. But third down and 26, I told myself here, I'm just going to throw the ball up to Odo Beckham Jr. regardless. And uh, he catches it. He catches it, man. The same animation as his touchdown that he had. And uh, kind of lucky there, but sometimes I'd rather be lucky than good. We have Ryan Brules wide open again, man. And he continues to have a huge episode as we pick up the first here. Now it's a second down and four. Scramble with Johnny. We find the main man, Cameron Clear. As we pick up the first down. And we pick up another one here off the fullback dive. It was a big first down now we have a third down and goal guys here I'm like I'm going for it even if I don't pick up this third down but what do you know what do you know who's there 
Cameron Clear, man. You can't make this up. He makes so many big plays. I, I just don't understand. If you guys have never tried him out, I know he's a bronze, but try him out. Just freaking try him out. And here, I was I was kind of irate because don't understand why my players, you know, bat the ball down at some times. That could have ended the game. But here, we do have him to a fourth down and three. Play action pass, and he has a guy wide open on the cross and routes, or that might have been a slant, but regardless, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's a first down. And here, he has a guy wide open, and what a clutch tackle right there. If he does not make that shoestring tackle, he gets into the end zone. So we have life, boys. We have life, and like I said, that out route from the running back is just, just killing me. I cannot stop it for anything, but we do have him, though, to a third down and seven. Only 30 seconds left to go, and I thought that was going to be a pick. I thought he jumped the route, but that actually is a first down. But he's actually letting the clock run right here. So this is going to be the last drive of the game. Second down and two. And we knocked the ball loose. It's a third down right here and two. And there's only a few seconds left to go. And that was actually a first down. That was actually a first down. I'm actually going to let you guys hear my live commentary here. Don't mind the gameplay volume. Let's see how it goes. This is for all the, the marbles Cowboys right here, boys. This is for all the marbles. Nobody's open. Nobody's open. Let oh, no. There's a second left. There's a second left. Oh, you got to be kidding me. One more play, guys. One more play is all we need. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes! We win! We win! Let's go! We get the win! 14 to boys! The greatest ending in this series so far. Oh, my God. I about had a heart attack. But we win 14 to 10. The full wins are row in this series, guys. Oh, my God, dude. I don't know who that was that just made that play that knocked the ball loose from Darren McFadden. But whoever they are, I love them with all my heart. Pretty insane ending, guys. So glad that we got the win. But like I said, I could not have shown you guys that live commentary the whole entire game because that gameplay volume was way too loud. But anyways, counting the upgrades, we had one touchdown pass from Johnny Manziel, which is two upgrades. He had over 100 yards passing, which is three upgrades. Minus one from the interception, so that's two. The win gives us three, and the Darren McFadden touchdown run gives us four upgrades to end off this episode. So the first three of our four upgrades to end off the episode is going to come at the offensive line. We're going to complete the offensive line in this episode and use one upgrade. I think the left guard, right guard, and right tackle position. Bring them all to an elite player under 50K. And the first one's going to be the left guard going to Mike Uapati, the team of the year card. I think he cost me like 40,000 coins. And then secondly, we're going to bring the right guard position to Kyle Long. The sole reason I picked Kyle Long is this guy is a gamer himself. He actually uh, streams games on Twitch all the time. So I think that's pretty cool to have a good player in the NFL that, you know, is into gaming. I think that's pretty cool. And if you follow him on Twitter, he actually, you know, promotes gaming and talks about how it's it's not, you know, as negative as a lot of people think it is. And then our last offensive line upgrade is going to come at the right tackle position. Going to bring in Lane Johnson because I had a lot of people want me to upgrade to Lane Johnson. So there you go. Our offensive line is now complete for this series. For our final upgrade of this episode, we're going to take out Jalen Ramsey at the cornerback number three position and bring in Kendall Fuller, 92 overall elite rookie card. I loved watching Kendall Fuller in college at Virginia Tech. Guys, a playmaker, so hopefully that translates into this team. And I don't know, I just didn't really like Jalen Ramsey. There was nothing really bad about like his stats aside from his catching, but he just never was in like the right position to make plays. So maybe his elite card is different, but hopefully Kendall Fuller is a baller like he is in real life and plays well in this series. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of Money Manziel. Hopefully you guys did enjoy despite having to do the post commentary. I truly apologize. And it really aggravated me because I really did love this video in terms of gameplay. I thought it was the best live commentaries I've done in a long time. And then that just kind of made me mad. But hopefully you guys still enjoyed. Hopefully it still was a quality video. And like I said, if you want to see another episode with the live commentary, like a regular episode, drop a like. If we have a thousand likes by tonight, I will upload the next episode tomorrow. But in terms of the episode, I thought it was a pretty good you know, gameplay. We're on a pretty good winning streak and hopefully we can continue that into the playoffs and hopefully win the Super Bowl in what will probably be this last season of Money Manziel because as you see, the team is close to finish. We have one more upgrade on offense that we can get and a couple more defensively but we're getting very very close and like i've said before after the upgrades are completed the whole entire team is elite we finish off this season and that does it for this series and then we'll start a new player road to glory so i want you guys to start thinking and let me know in the comment section below who you'd like to see for the next player road to glory we still have unfinished business to do 
for this series, and hopefully that means a Super Bowl victory to round out the series. But with that said, guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.